If I asked you, what is a tree, what would you say? You could start with a simple description. Trees are usually tall. They've got green things on them called leaves. They've got a trunk made of wood. But what is it? How might a plant scientist answer the question? They might describe the biological machinery that trap energy from photons. Or they could describe the special adaptations trees have to absorb water. Or how specially adapted tubes called xylem vessels can carry that water through the plant. But again, what is a tree? To understand things, one approach is to reduce them down to their smallest parts. An approach known as reductionism. Reductionism relies on the idea that we can fully understand all properties of something if we understand all of the smaller parts that make it up. There's an ancient Buddhist parable about a group of blind men who come across an elephant, something the blind men have never known before. They decide to try and figure out what this thing is, and each of them reach out to feel a part of it. One grabs the trunk and says, this thing they've discovered is like a snake. The next blind man reaches out and touches the elephant's ear. He disagrees with the first man and describes this new thing as being like some kind of fan. Each blind man gains information about a different part of the elephant. None of them figure out what an elephant is. The mistake the blind men made was not communicating. But even if they had shared what they had learnt, would their combined knowledge about the elephant's tusks, legs, trunk, ears and skin texture have painted a true picture of what an elephant is? Reductionism says yes. If you understand all of the smaller parts, you understand the whole thing. So what about the systems approach? The systems approach says no. You cannot fully understand something unless you view it as a whole and see it interact with its environment. We know a lot about the individual parts, the biological structures that make up a tree, but let's think about what a tree is when we see it as a whole, using the systems approach. A tree takes raw materials and uses them to provide food that supports an ecosystem. It offers shelter and shade. It provides the very oxygen that we animals breathe in every moment of our lives. A tree is certainly much more than a collection of biological structures. Leaves alone can't make food through photosynthesis, not without other components of the tree. Roots can't take in water unless there's a stream of it moving through a plant stem. Plant cells can't offer shelter for animals. The properties of a tree that exist when all components are put together are known as emergent properties. Properties that don't exist in any individual component alone. This combining of parts to make something greater than the sum of themselves is what we call synergy. To understand a tree, one expert might study the part of a leaf that traps light, while another might study the chemicals that make plants tilt towards the light, while another specialist might investigate the cells responsible for controlling the movement of essential nutrients. It would be unfair to compare these scientists to the blind men in the parable. For one thing, unlike the blind men who didn't share what they learned with each other, scientists and researchers work very hard to share their findings and build on each other's work, ultimately contributing to our understanding of the system as a whole. If, however, scientists combined all of their collective knowledge on a tree, but never actually saw one as a whole, in its natural environment, could they predict its emergent properties? Can reductionism predict synergy? Maybe, but the systems approach actually observes it. Reductionism explains that studying the individual parts, seeing each jigsaw piece in turn, is all you need to do to see the picture. 
The systems approach, on the other hand, says, do the puzzle and look at the picture. 